What's up YouTube family, uh, welcome to this tutorial video. In this video, um, I'm not really showing my face because my hair is on cam, so uh, just manage the screen like that. Uh, that's what's the most important thing. Uh, I want to show you guys how I went from this image right here to this image right here. Okay, so I'm just going to put them side by side so you can see. Um, this is exactly how it was shot, so that's the image on the left and how we managed to get it to look like the one on the right. So I'm sure you noticed that there's not a lot of coloring going on because I shot it exactly like that. So um, we got it pretty close to perfect in camera. Um, what I want to show you specifically is how I was able to add this sand, um, this sand, this little heaps of sand, you know, just to add an extra um, touch to the image. Okay. So uh, so first of all, I, I, I use Liquify to straighten out this. And I'm not going to go over that. Everybody knows how to use Liquify, or should I? Uh, you know what? Let me just do it. So we'll right click and say Edit with Photoshop. Uh, I'm just going to use Photoshop 2024 because I have the latest one. Um, if you don't have that, you can just go to your Adobe um, Creative Cloud and update it. You should have the latest Photoshop. OK. So. Um, Quickly, we crop this to four by five, I think. And let this crop this to four by five. Perfect. And then now, uh, the tricky part was getting to, you know, make the make the lights behind look more circular. You know, right now it looks a bit over. And what we did was we used liquify. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J. And then do um, Shift Command X. That's a shortcut to go to Liquify. Okay. Now, not many people know this, but if you know this, then you know it's very useful while using Liquify. When you pick this warp tool here uh, with W, you can adjust the pressure. Okay. If you leave it by default, it's on 100 100 percent pressure, and that's when you have to be really careful with how you move. You know, because it does a lot. But when you reduce the pressure to stuff like maybe 12 or 8, you know, you can. Warp pins gradually, you know, if that makes sense. So you don't have to make massive adjustments once. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. So um, I kind of use this to just adjust uh, this oval shape behind her to make, make it a bit more circular. Okay. Uh, you have to be careful not to um, warp the subjects right there in the middle. Um, there's also a tool you can use. You can press um, F, kind of like F for freeze. I don't know if it's freeze, but okay, yeah, freeze mask. So what you want to do is yeah, you can just mask your subject out like this. And once you do that, you don't have to be afraid of, um, you don't have to be afraid when using the warp tool because whatever you warp, you see, it doesn't affect whatever it is you have masked. So that's that's a good way to to protect you know your subject from being you know warped funnily okay so we're just going to do that and then you can um, erase some of those by using D I'm just going to erase that because I want to adjust these little parts here and I'm just going to freeze her a little bit more like that okay so now I'm going to keep W again for our warp tool, we're just going to adjust this a little bit. I'm not sure exactly if this is looking, starting to look round or not, but I think it took me a couple of trials the first time to get it to look exactly how I wanted it to look. It wasn't perfect. I didn't want it to be perfectly round either. So I'm just going to click OK and see what that looks like. So we've gone from here to here. It looks a lot better. Um, don't worry about these. We can adjust those. So uh, just use your patch tool. J for patch tool, and then carefully select. Make sure you don't select inside the big circle. And look for somewhere nice to replace it with. Hold on. Hold on. Let me stump visible layer first. Stump visible layer with Shift Alt Command E before you do this, okay? So I'm just going to do this, and bam, we have that clean. We're also going to do here, and then like that, we're good. Okay, so just like that, we've gone from here to here. 
to here. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to take it into liquify again, just to round off the corners a bit. I feel like these edges look a bit flat, so let's just round this off a bit more. And that's starting to look a little better. Okay. All right, perfect. Or at least good, right? If it's not perfect. Okay, so once you're done with that, now uh, the main domain, how did we add the sand? Okay, so first of all, I think I extended this a bit. I just extended this a bit to the bottom like this. And here, before you click OK, come and then click Generative Expand, right? This is a awesome, very, very fast way to expand your, your um, pictures. Um, it uses Adobe's AI to figure out what it wants to put there instead of using Content Aware. Content Aware is not as smart as generative AI. So um, let's just try that and see if we like how that looks. It usually takes about a second. No, not a second. I mean like less than a minute rather. It takes about a minute to do. So, okay, boom, and we're done. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and add the sand now. It might not look exactly like the one I did, this one here, um, but hopefully we can get something similar. All right, so I'm just going to select this area here. You know, I don't mind selecting part of our knee. I'll just select that like that. And then I'll add to the selection by selecting this area here as well. And I'm just going to click on Generative Fill and then write Sand Hips, All right? Now, click generate. Now, the way generative AI works is it's not, while it's smart, it's not that smart. So you can't like give it instruction and say, add this particular color or that. No. It also works only with the area that you have selected. So if I select a certain area, I can then just say sand hips, and then it will add, not to add sand hips there and try and add it realistically at least. And then it gives you three options to pick from. So we're just going to wait to see. So now, bam, this is what we get. So, you know, it looks a bit different. It looks a bit different from the one we did earlier, but you can see what it looks like. It looks pretty good, right? So let's see the other options that were added. And hmm, I think I like the first one the best. So I like this kind of like the best, right? And I'm just going to add a bit more as well. So let me just click over here and add sand again. So I'm just going to click sand. Um, it is going to evaluate the entire scene. It's going to look at the lighting. And it's going to try and make it look as realistic as possible. Um, generative AI is the future. And it's really good. But I'm hearing that from November, we might have to pay for it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But so far, um, so good. If you don't have the latest Photoshop, you can try it out in the beta version of Photoshop. Um, but it's available in the latest you know, full version now. Okay, so I'm just going to click this, and you can see that it starts to add. Let's just zoom in here, and you can see before, after. So it's adding some more sand to that area. Yeah. The way it works is that wherever you select, it it's, it's regenerates all the pixels for that area. So what you would notice is that even from the first one I selected, I selected part of her knee. It would regenerate her knee as well, right? So you see that her knee is not exactly how it looked before. It would re regenerate her knee whilst it's regenerating everything as well. So you don't be afraid to click into your subjects, if that makes sense. So I'm going to add here as well, select part of address, and just click here, and then click Generative Fill again, and then just say, let's add some more sand. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's try. OK, so OK, something went wrong. Let me just stamp visible here and do this again and click Sand. Click Generate, and then we'll see what happens. OK, so it's working, it's working, it's working. All right, so he, he added something, he added something definitely. I like what he did. Um, if you don't like what you're seeing, just try and you know click again and regenerate. But basically, that is how we were able to do this image that didn't have any sand to 
This one, this is the one I did first, and then this is the one I did just now. Where is it? I can't find it. Okay, I haven't saved. I haven't saved from Photoshop, but this is the one I just did right now in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you really enjoyed the video, please leave a link, uh, a like rather, <laughs> in the comment section, or let me know what you think about this video. Uh, also, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them in the comment section below. Um, also, I have a Capture One course, and if you want to learn more about how I play around with colors in Capture One, please feel free to click the link uh, in the description below to buy the course. Thank you, guys. See you in the next one. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.